Hi, welcome to this series of videos on mechanics of forecasting methods. I am Piyush. We will talk about seasonal indices. The series is uh, about five specific items, the moving average, the exponential smoothing, trend line, seasonal indices to be followed by measures of forecasting accuracy. Uh, there will be some support videos in addition to these five main videos to help you understand the methods better. Uh, the seasonal indices that we are talking about here is a very simple version uh, suitable only for seasonal variation. In case the data has co a combination, say random and seasonal or trend and seasonality, this particular method would not be suitable. And as always, these quantitative methods are generally suitable for short term and in some cases for medium term. Let's jump into the data. The data set that we have here Let's, it's to be first plotted so that we can understand the type of variation. We take a line chart and it clearly tells us that there is a seasonality in action. Where if you look at the table here, every second quarter there's a peak, 185, 190 and 188. This is the second quarter. And every fourth quarter, 94, 90 and 95, there's a dip. So, clearly season variation in play. Now, let me show the table which we already have here. Um, it's just replotted. So, there the are four years, three years here, year one, year two, and year three, and four quarters. This, those are the seasons. The seasons need not be four quarters. They can be each day of the week. They can be every hour in case of McDonald's. All right. So, what we do here is first find the total sale of every year and each year equal to sum this data equal to C enter this are the total of each of the years and we also find the average per quarter so equal to average of each of these four data sets wonderful control C to A uh, now what this says is in the first year the sale total sale was 556 and in absence of seasonality the sale per quarter would have been 139 units. Same thing for year 2 it's 555 and in absence of seasonality it would have been 138.75 per quarter. Um, I'll copy this um, a template here to help me find the seasonal indices and I'll just delete the data. So the seasonal indice for the first quarter would be the demand of that particular quarter which is 145 divided by the average. The average member represents the demand had there been no seasons. So this division tells us that the effect of seasonality is to increase the sale by 4%. 1.04 represents 4.3 percent here. We fix up the eighth row so that the formula can be copied and we get the seasonal indice for every quarter of that first year. So for the fourth which is uh, the dip, the worst quarter, we say that the seasonality brings down the average sale by around 32.4 percent. Uh, we can again copy this for the remaining two years to give us three values of seasonal indice for each quarter. Um, I can sum them up and average. I can take the median. I can omit the maximum and the minimum. There are many ways to get to one number of the seasonal indices. Here we'll take the average. The average of these three methods. To see and paste it down. Um, a technical point. The, the sum of these seasonal indices should equal to the number of periods of the year or the day that we are considering. So since we have four quarters, the sum should be four, equal to sum of these four periods. Wonderful, it is four. In case it is not, we would have to proportionately increase or decrease each of the seasonal indices to make it equal to four. So now these are the seasonal indices for each of the four quarters. In case somebody tells me that there is a year four, um, year four, with a total demand expected to be around 570, 
570. So the average uh, of every quarter would be around 570 divided by 4, which is 142.5. For the year 4, 1, 2, year 4, and each of the one, quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, and quarter 4, this forecast for year 4 quarter 1 would be equal to average multiplied by equals to average let me do it again multiplied by the seasonal indice of that quarter so it's 142 which is the average without the season multiplied by 1.03 to put in the effect of the season F2 let me fix up the 19th row and then copy this to get me the forecast for each and every quarter of the next year. So this is how to calculate the seasonal indices and use the seasonal indices for forecasting the future. Thank you for watching the video. Please like it if it helped you. Share it and communicate it about it to your friends. In case uh, you want, please do drop me a line on piyushasha at gmail.com. I repeat, it's piyush, P -I -Y -U -S -H, a -sha at gmail.com. I'll be happy to answer your queries and receive your suggestions. Thank you.